thanks for joining me in this video. Today I'm going to show you how I did this teapot cake or um, tea can cake. Yeah, it's quite easy I promise. We're going to do it step by step. First off we start with the actual cake part. Um, to bake the actual cake in I used those um, cake pans, those ball ones, no, half, half ball, <laughs> round ones. Um, I bought those in a cake supply store near me, so um, I'm pretty. But I'm I'm pretty sure you can find something similar to this on uh, Amazon, I guess. Or maybe uh, you could also use. That's what I did uh, for the most for the longest time. I used some IKEA stainless steel salad bowls. Um, I'm pretty sure you can find those in your country as well. Um, yeah, so just watch on. Uh, just go Google or Amazon find something similar to this. Um, what I'm doing right here is I'm greasing the whole thing, both of them. Now I'm going to put some flour in it so nothing sticks. That's very important for me. Um, so everything comes out nicely and we don't have to struggle with that. Okay, let's talk about the cake. Um, I just prepared some um, regular sponge cake, kind of. Um, very fluffy, very um, light and airy. It's very similar to um, angel cake. Yeah, comes uh, comes close. It's very very fluffy and airy. I baked those until they were done. You just gotta watch for your packet direction uh, to see how you have to do it. After I baked them, I flipped them out of the pans and let them cool completely. While those were cooling, I was preparing my Rice Krispie treat stuff. <laughs> Um, and for that you're just going to melt some marshmallows and then you also of course need some Rice Krispies. Um, if you want um, a specific recipe I, can, I, I can't offer that to you yet because I'm still trying to find a very good recipe. So um, that was just a test that wasn't very successful. Oh, I wasn't 100% satisfied with that. Um, just Google Rice Krispie Treats and I'm pretty sure you can find something that you can work with. Um, yeah, So I just prepared my Rice Krispie Treat stuff. <laughs> um, pushing everything together so everything gets nice and sturdy and um, sticks nicely together. And to make my life a bit easier for the forming part and um, shaping part that's what I was trying to say. Uh, I just used some cookie cutters. Um, first I greased my hands so nothing sticks because that stuff is sticky as hell. Uh, so grease your hands while working with that and grease your form, your, your molds, I think. Yeah. Um, I used the cookie cutters and a bit of my Rice Krispie Treat stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how else to say it, but I just uh, took some of it and just press it in my cookie cutter shape so um, it takes the shape of the cookie cutter nice and round a bit more high that's the foot of the tea can that's what this is for I used two different sizes because I wasn't sure about the proportions yet so um, I just prepared two two different sizes there you can see after you're done with that just put it aside to the cake stuff let it cool completely until it gets very nice and solid and hard okay next part is the, the lid, the nozzle, I think it's what it's called, and the handle, where you grab the whole thing. Um, I just used some gum paste, good quality gum paste. I know Squire's Kitchen makes awesome gum paste. Wilton one is okay as well, in my opinion. Just use whatever you have on hand or buy it online. I just rolled out a piece of my gum paste very nice and thinly. Now I was cutting it out with some uh, cookie cutter, as you can see. <laughs> Um, to give it a bit more detail, I used a toothpick and just poked little ho uh, holes around the, the 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 edge. Yeah. Okay. After that was done, I put that one to the side, and I also rolled a little bowl, no bowl, ball. There you go, <laughs> out of gum paste to stick that on top, so we can have something to grab on for the lid. So. That's what this is about. And after I was done with that, I just put that to the side and uh, let it dry completely. For the handle, I used some gum paste again. And what you can see right here is I used some flower wire, a quite a thick one. This one just makes it easier for me to have everything nice and sturdy and hard. 
uh, to form as you can see right here was just easy just the easiest part about the whole thing in my opinion <laughs> uh, i just formed that and i was trying to see if the proportions are nicely if it wasn't too big wasn't too small but uh, i think we'll go right here so just roll it out into a long snake shape um, put the wire through and just form it like how you would like it i don't know what this tool is called i'm using right here but you you just use it to uh, give it some more detail it's like um, a tweezer similar to a tweezer but it gives a lot, lot, lot of shape a nice shape as you can see here um, yeah it's just for a little bit more detail so I was just pinching it but you can easily skip this step nothing nothing special okay after I was done with that part that thing that handle went to the side to dry completely again and now we're trying to um, form the nozzle I, I don't know what this is called, but the tip where the actual tea comes out. Yeah. <laughs> I used gum paste again, rolled it into a snake shape, one side a bit thinner as you can see. Now all I'm doing is trying to uh, form it in sort of an S shape, like the letter as you can see. Um, so nothing special again, quite easy again. Um, what I did also was uh, holding it against the cake to see if the proportions are nicely but as you can see, it looks quite nice. I think that's good. Leave it like that, put it to the side, let it dry completely. Next step, filling, stacking and covering the whole cake. So, as I said before, I put way too much cake batter into my uh, baking pan, so I had to trim quite a bit off. So, I did that on both and um, trimmed the edges, so everything is nice and round and neat. And for the filling part, I used some Swiss meringue buttercream, but you can use whatever you like. I would highly advi advise you to not use any sort of cream or a cream cheese kind of, that's just way too soft. So maybe be aware of that. Don't use that in my opinion. I used the buttercream to fill and to cover my whole cake. Just That's just personal preference. Just use whatever you like. I think um, ganache would work nicely as well. So, um, there's two opinions for you. <laughs> the recipe for the Swiss meringue buttercream, I have it on my blog, but it's in German, so um, I can't offer that to you yet. But I'm pretty sure if you Google some Swiss meringue buttercream, you will find tons and tons of recipes. Just use one of those and um, you'll be good to go. Very, very easy. As you saw, I just filled both of my uh, halves. <laughs> with my buttercream. Now I'm covering the whole thing quite thinly at first to um, give it a bit more um, stability yes, and um, get everything nice and neat and to to nicely cover everything and get a nice even layer. Um, I used a little of a cream cheese container to uh, pull everything smoothly. <laughs> I don't know how it's to say it but you can see what I mean. Um, the piece of plastic I'm using is sturdy enough so everything looks nice but um, soft enough so I can bend it in the shape I want it. Um, yeah, so quite easy. Uh, after I've, I covered both of my uh, my half balls, <laughs> my half, half rounds, I put them in the freezer, let them sit for around an hour so everything gets nice and cool and sturdy and way, way, way easier to work with. So there was an hour later you can see everything is nice and not hard but sturdy and uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, stick on the rice crispy foot can you say it that way i guess huh um the bottom part we just prepared it's, at this point it's very nice and hard again and uh, easy to work with so you can see i could easily flip my cake upside down everything uh, holds shape nicely and i was uh, <laughs> switching Okay, okay, there you go. So, next step, filling the middle of the cake. I was uh, trying to not fill it too much, so it, it's not going to get too heavy. I was uh, afraid if it gets too heavy, the shape wouldn't be, would, wouldn't stay the same. Um, yeah, so just be careful, fill it thinly, in my opinion, that's a, a safer bet. <laughs> and now, um, put some buttercream on the on the seams again and then taking my plastic part my plastic thingy again 
and making everything smooth again and then it just went into the refrigerator again for around 40 minutes to an hour again yes i know that's a lot of refrigerating but i promise you it's way way easier when everything is nice and cold and um just yeah just solid <laughs> i guess okay that was an hour later now we're going to cover the whole thing again um but this time we're going to use a bit more buttercream so nothing shines through through the fondant after we apply the fondant so just cover the whole thing it's a bit of a challenge yes uh, i admit that <laughs> it took me a while to um, get everything coated nice and evenly but uh, just be patient it's gonna come together i promise do your best um i started off on top and then work my way down then i used my plastic thingy again everything made everything nice and smooth again and then yes put it in the refrigerator again you guessed it it went into the cooling again for around uh, 30 minutes again so everything is nice and sturdy and solid so we can apply the fondant very very easily Okay, let's let's do the last part, the fun part in my opinion. It's covering with fondant and uh, decorating and just putting everything together. Okay, for this project I'm using some Masaticino. I'm pretty sure you can buy that around the world. I hope so. Oh no, no, I'm using a different one. This one is called Shanties. It's a German brand, um, but it's very, very similar to um, Masaticino which is my personal preference of all time. Um, if I don't mention what kind of fondant I'm using, it's most likely uh, Masaticino by Karma. Okay, so I um, I colored my fondant in some golden yellow uh, color from Wilton, I guess. Uh, sun yellow, anything like this kind of uh, color. Now I'm just rolling everything out with uh, a lot of cornstarch, enough of cornstarch so nothing sticks. And as you can see right here, I just covered the whole thing and I'm pinching um, the opposite sides of the cake. So uh, I pinched two sides of the cake, the fondant directly together because this is where I'm going to cut off the excess of the fondant. You can probably guess that covering a round cake, uh, like yeah, this uh, kind of shape ball, uh, ball <laughs> shape is quite hard to uh, cover with um, no, no pleats, no nothing. So that's my my personal preference to cover round cakes um, just pinching two sides the opposite sides and um, pinch everything nice and neat together and now we're just going to use the scissors and cut the excess fondant off um, please use clean sanitized scissors pretty 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 please um, it's just food we're working with so no dirty garden scissors no nothing very clean scissors please um, but I think that's, <laughs> you could guess that by yourself. Um, I'm cutting almost on the cake. So I was laying my scissors flat with the cake, cutting the excess off. As you can see right here, yes, we have a little bit of a, um, what do you say it? No, not scar, um, mm -hmm. a seam, yes. I think that's what we can call it. We have a seam, yes, but if you work with it long enough and uh, melt it with your um, the heat of your fingers together, um, I'm pretty sure, or at least in my opinion, I could uh, get all the seams out. I'm trying to, to no, how do you say it? To uh, yeah, to to polish my round cake with some leftover fondant. This way, I get a very nice smooth. Um, oh man, this is hard. <laughs> um, get a nice smooth surface, um, polishing the, the the seams. Yeah, um, those two long wooden sticks I put in were just for me to uh, grab on, so I have more stability to work with. Very very easy. Next step to decorate the whole teapot, tea canvas, I just rolled out some P 
pink fondant and some green fondant and just use some flower cutter so nothing very special i know that was very easy i was trying to um be quite easy with the decoration because the whole cake itself is um is a job on its own so um, the decorations yeah are quite easy i know but you could easily do something very special and fun with it um yeah just try it out so i'm punching out some some casual flowers now i'm sticking them on and the first thing i'm trying to or why i'm trying to stick them on is uh, around the seams we have left over from cutting the excess fun and so that's where i'm trying to uh, stick a few of them on so we can cover the seam a little bit and also we are going to put the handle and the nozzle we uh we left to dry out and did earlier today um we are going to stick those on there so you can even see the whole um the whole seam thing <laughs> yeah okay next part yes the green fund and again roll it out i'm using a little leaf cutter as you can see right here and then after i'm cutting them out yes those are going to get stuck on the cake again with some sugar glue or just plain water use either I think both work just as well. Stick those on, uh, cover the seams, make give it a little bit more detail, and um, yeah, we're coming to an end. Woohoo! There you can see right here. You can't even see the seam, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, just cover it, stick everything on, make it pretty. <laughs> Quite easy. Um, okay, after I was done with that. Sorry for the bad angle. There you go. That's my result right now. I'm taking out my toothpick thingies. <laughs> um, those were just for me to uh, hold on to the cake so nothing tips over. Um, now we're going to put on the the handle of the teapot. And I just, yes, I, I leave the wire on. I leave it in because for me it's just way, way easier to stick it in like this. Gives it a lot more stability and shape. As you can see right here, I can really push it in. And everything sticks nicely. I'm applying some sugar glue to really stick it on there. <laughs> Using a little ball tool to give it some depth. So I can stick it in right there. And um, so that's one part. The lid I just placed it on top. Sticked it on with some sugar glue as well. And for the nozzle as you can see right here. I'm using some toothpicks. So two of those. Stuck them in there. And um, now I'm sticking the whole thing in the cake opposite from my handle as you might be able to tell right here <laughs> and um, yeah I put something against it so everything can very um, adhere to the cake until the glue dries and what I'm doing right here as well is uh, steaming the whole cake so I get uh, all my starch leftovers uh, away uh, no oh, that sounds awful but you see what I mean I'm just steaming the whole cake to give it a nice finish and uh, take off the dust and the cornstarch. Okay, and after that I was done. Yes, yes. Very exciting, I know. My mama was uh, over the moon. She loved the cake. Yeah, so that's the finished product. I hope you liked it. <laughs> Let me know uh, if there's anything I can help you with. Um, other than that, I'm pretty sure I can upload a new video next week. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to upload a lot, a lot of videos in the next few weeks. So, um, yeah. Uh, I guess we'll see each other next week then. Bye.